So we want to look at chapter 2, which is basically our unit on equations and inequalities. So far we've dealt just with algebraic expressions, algebraic expressions, so we want to go to equations. Equations are an extension of algebraic expressions, so let's define, first of all, what is an equation? Definition. Pen is not writing here. A little stylus, garbage stylus that's worth hardly anything. Definition. An equation involves an algebraic expression set equal to an algebraic ex expression. An equation involves an algebraic expression. It's not writing. It's really sad. So the expensive Apple pens, those guys are like $100. Mine are like $2. My styluses, they barely write. An equation involves an algebraic expression set equal to. Another algebraic expression. Yep. So basically you got two algebraic expressions that are set equal to each other. That's what an equation is. Now let's look at some examples. Number one. Let's say I have this equation. 4x plus 3 equals 4x plus 3. This is an equation, right? We have an algebraic expression on the left set equal to an algebraic expression on the right. This is actually always true, is always true. This equation is always true. Any equation that's always true is called an identity. So this is called an identity, this type. Come on, right man, this type of equation. is called an identity. Something that's always true is an identity. An identity, that's the term, formal term. Now, as far as solving an equation, solving an equation involves trying to find what values you can plug into the variable, what numbers you can plug into the variable to make it true. Um, so we can plug in any number for x, and then it's always going to be true, right? If I plugged in 1, we get 4 times 1 plus 3 would be 7. If I plugged in 1 on the other side, I have 4 times 1 plus 1 would be 7. If I plugged in 2, you'd have, what, 4 times 2 plus 3, that would be, what, 8 plus 3 is 11. And on the right, 4 times 2 plus 3, that would be, what, 8 plus 3 is 11. So you have eight, uh, 11 equals 11. It doesn't matter what I plug in for x, it's always going to be true. So equations that are all always true, the solution set consists of all real numbers. I can plug in any real number for x, and this is always going to be true. So the solution set consists of all real numbers. Consists of all real Numbers, all right, NOS, that's the UK abbreviation for numbers, all real numbers. Sometimes you'll see all real numbers written as this blackboard R, it's called blackboard R. This is the, the symbol for all real numbers. Or sometimes you'll see it this way, parentheses, negative infinity to infinity. So when you're looking on the number line, all the way to the left would be negative infinity. All the way to the right would be positive infinity. So you're allowed to pick any number on the real number line and plug it into uh, the equation for x. And it's always going to be a true statement. So these are two different symbols here for all real numbers. The, the blackboard R and the negative infinity to positive infinity, this also means all real numbers. So these are two alternate notations. If you want to use them, you can. I'm not really emphasizing these notations, but just be aware that just be aware they're out there. Probably some of you have encountered both of them.
or at least one of them. All right, so you have equations that are always true. They're called identities. You can plug in anything for x, and they'll always be true. So we say the solutions that consist of all real numbers. A second type of equation we want to look at is one like this. x minus 6, x plus 3. Now, if you're trying to methodically solve this equation, I mean, you could try plugging in different numbers. But to methodically solve such an equation, one way to do that, let's, uh, let's try to get rid of the x's, let's say. So we can eliminate the x's. So we have an x minus 6 on the left, an x plus 3 on the right. We can eliminate the x's by, for example, subtracting an x from both sides of the equation. What you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other side of the equation. When you do that, the x's will cancel on the left, and you have a minus 6 equal sign, and the x and the negative x will cancel on the right, and you have a 3. And the question is, is negative 6 equal to 3? This is, is never true. So this equation is never true. It means it doesn't matter what I plug in for x. I can plug in any number for, for x, and I'll never get a true equation. So the solution set here is no solution. So this equation has no solution. So this type of equation, this type of equation, that's never true is called a contradiction. That's the type of equation it is. There is no solution. So when, when you're asking about the solution set here, no solution is the answer. There's no solution. There is no solution. So you can't plug in anything for x to make it true, so there's no solution to this equation. So some equations have uh, all real numbers as a solution set. Some equations have no solutions at all. And the most common type of equations that we're going to encounter will be something more like this. Let's say we have 2x plus 5 equals 9. And let's say we wanted to solve this equation. In other words, we want to find out what can we plug in for x to make this true. But if you want to be methodical about this, you want to do your order of operations in reverse order. So remember order of operations you got. P-E-M-D-A-S. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. This stands for what? Parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. So you want to do these in reverse order, basically. Basically, we'll scratch out the parentheses, get rid of the parentheses. And basically, you want to undo undo these operations in reverse order. So you want to start by, so addition and subtraction, it doesn't matter which ones you do there first, undo. Multiplication, division, it doesn't matter which ones you undo first. But basically, first you want to undo addition and subtraction. Second, you want to undo multiplication or division. And third, you want to do any exponents. Of course, we don't have any exponents here. So the first thing we're going to deal with is we have what addition, right? We have addition right here. So what we're going to do, we have to undo this addition. How do you undo addition? Well, the opposite of addition is subtraction. So we're going to subtract 5 from both sides, and that's going to leave us with 2x. The positive 5 and negative 5 cancel there, so we have an equal sign, and then 9 minus 5 is 4. So the next operation that shows up is this uh, multiplication operation between the the 2 here in the x, put a little dot there so you can see that. So we have to undo the 
multiplication. How do we undo multiplication? Well, the opposite of dividing. Uh, multiplying is dividing, so we're going to divide both sides here by 2. Essentially, these 2's cancel out, and you get variable of x left by itself. On the right-hand side, 4 divided by 2 is 2. So this tells you your solution to this equation. There's only one solution right here. Uh, you can actually check your work here. You can check that it checks out. You have 2 times blank plus 5 equals 9. So let's go ahead and plug in 2 in place of the x here. So 2 times 2 is 4. And 4 plus 5 is 9. So you get 9 equals 9. That's correct. So it checks out. So this is an equation that just it doesn't have all real numbers as solutions. It does have a solution, but it just has one here. So we call this a conditional equa equation. So here's the solution, too. This is, is a conditional equation. So an, a conditional equation is an equation that's sometimes true and it's sometimes false. So most of the time it's false, but it's only true in one instance, and that's when x equals 2, right? So most of the time we're going to be dealing with conditional equations that might just have one solution, or maybe two solutions. Later we'll have some that have two solutions when we study quadratic equations. All right, so we want to get comfortable with um, solving some equations. It's going to be our goal. We want to solve some equations. So exercise. Solve the equation, if possible. All right, so number one, what do we have? 6x minus 5 equals 3x plus 13. So the idea is you want to get all your variables on one side, and you want to get all your constants on the other side. So I personally prefer generally, generally, to get all my variables on the left, all my constants on the right, but it doesn't have to be that way. So I want to get all my variables on the left, so I'm going to subtract 3x from the right-hand side. If I do it to the right-hand side, I have to do it to the left-hand side. And I want to get all my constants to the right side. So to get this minus 5, get rid of that minus 5 on the left, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to add 5. I'm going to add 5. So what happens when you combine 6x and minus 3x? 6x and minus 3x. 6x minus 3x is going to be 3x. Notice the negative 5 and the positive 5 here. They cancel. So we're not going to write anything underneath there. Then we're going to put an equal sign. And then on the right-hand side of the equation, what, 3x and negative 3x? They're going to cancel, so we're not going to write anything under there. And then we got, what, 13 and 5. 13 and 5, they're both positive. Give you positive 18. So underneath there, we're going to write a positive 18. All right, so we have 3x equals 18. We simplified this. So now what operation is occurring still in that equation when we have 3 times x, right? 3 times x. We have this little multiplication right here between 3 and the x, so we're going to get rid of multiplication by dividing by 3. If we divide the left side by 3, we have to divide the right side by 3. So the 3's cancel, and we're going to have simply x remaining, and on the right-hand side, 18 divided by 3 is 6, so you just have a solution of 6. And if you want to check it, you can. I'm not going to bother checking this way. You can plug it back in and check it to see if it works out. Okay, here's a number two. Now we have five, parentheses, six x minus one, close parentheses, plus seven, and then the equal sign, and after the equal sign, a 19 minus four x. Now the first thing you want to deal with when you get a more complex 
equation like this, you want to distribute, if possible, get rid of your parentheses, and then combine like terms. So basically, you want to clean things up first inside of your equation before you really begin the process of getting the x's on one side and the constants on the other side. So I'm going to begin here with distributing this, this 5 through. I'm going to clear out these parentheses. I'm going to do 5 times 6x is 30x, and 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. Okay, I got the plus 7. I'll copy that down. On the right-hand side, I got 19 minus 4x. I'll just copy that down. So from there, I'm just going to combine some like terms here. I'm going to combine negative 5 and 7. So I'll copy down the 30x. Negative 5 plus 7 is going to be positive 2, right? Negative 5 plus 7 is positive 2. And that's equal to a 19 minus 4x, just copying down. Now it's at this stage where I want to get all the x's on one side and all the constants, the numbers on the opposite side. If I'm getting all the x's, let's say on the left side, I'm going to add 4x to the right side to get rid of negative 4x, and I'm going to add 4x to the left side to balance that out. And if I want to get rid of the 2 on the left side, I'm going to have to subtract a 2, and I'll have to do that on the right side. I'll have to subtract a 2. So let's now combine 30x and 4x to get 34x. The 2 and the negative 2 cancel. We'll have an equal sign. 19 minus 2 is going to be 17. And negative 4 and positive 4 cancel. So we got 34x equals 17. Okay, so we just have 34 times x equals 17. We want to get rid of that multiplication between the 34 and the x. So we're going to just uh, divide both sides here by 34 to get rid of that multiplication by 34. The 34s are going to cancel. We're going to have x left over equals, what's 17 over 34? Well, 17 over 34 is not a whole number. It's a fraction, right? 17 over 34 is a fraction. It doesn't reduce to a whole number. Uh, notice that we can divide 17 out of the top and divide 17 out of the bottom. On top, 17 divided by 17 is 1. 34 divided by 17 on bottom is 2. So you've got 1 half, right? 17 over 34 reduces to 1 half. So that's your solution there. If you want to plug it in and check it, you can. I'm not going to bother doing that.